So, good morning to everybody. We are very happy and excited to open this meeting today for Scuola Sant'Anna. The PhD students uh, are very important and we believe that uh, our mission um, should be to uh, facilitate in, in every way we can the work that uh, is carried out uh, in the 10 programs, in, in the 10 uh, PhD programs. So, first of all, welcome to all of you. Uh, I know that uh, most program already started from the beginning of October, but we thought it was important uh, to, uh, to organize this meeting now in November because some of you had some problems to arrive in Pisa, especially the international students, and so we tried to, uh, to wait for everybody to be here. We still know that some of you are still have some problems with their visa, uh, so we will do other small meeting in the next uh, weeks uh, uh, when, when we will all be, uh, all of you will be arrived. Um, thank you for choosing Scuola Sant'Anna. This is a small university but strong in research and in applied science. We believe uh, that our PhD programs can, uh, uh, can give you, and now we will have all the presentation today, can give you a great opportunity to become uh, good researchers, but also to be ready to work in different fields we believe that interdisciplinarity is really a magic word in, in Santana, so you will have the opportunity to have a lot of uh, occasion for putting it in, in, in place a good research work with a disciplinary approach, but also to have the opportunity to discuss with other PhD students and to meet and to know other type of approaches that come from other fields. So we believe that organize a meeting where you have the opportunity to meet each other, it's part of your training program so that from now on you will not just know and, and, and be able to recognize the faces of the people that are working with you in your PhD program, but also to be able to recognize other PhD students uh, that are involved in other programs. So uh, we believe that this is a great occasion to be curious to be uh, interested in knowing what's going on also in other locations of the school. This is the central building. Lots of things go on in these central buildings. And you have to feel yourself at home when you come here. So please move sometimes from Pontedera, from uh, Tecip, from uh, the other, from all the, uh, from Plan Lab, from Crop Science, from all the buildings where you work, but sometimes come in the central buildings. There are a lot of seminars and occasion to meet. This is your home. So feel comfortable to get all the opportunities that the school can offer you. The training program is in your hands uh, and what you're going to be able to achieve in these three years depends on lo a lot on what, how you will be able to uh, get the best from uh, this school and from the different opportunities that you will have. So please uh, um, try to do your best to uh, get all, the, all this opportunity and to uh, be part
part of the, this big team together with the professor and the researchers of the school. Now, uh, usually we, uh, we, we, we like, at least uh, the, the professor and the researchers of the school, we like uh, to define the school a research university as uh, the first goal of, other, of our institution. But we also think that if we are able to, to carry out good research, this is the best way also to link together the research with education and with the training programs. They go together, hand by hand. And the third pillar of our mission is what we call the third mission. Because we believe that research and education have to have an impact in our society, have to be able to make the difference for our citizens, for our country, and for Europe, and for the whole world. So I would like just to uh, close my introduction and then leave the floor to Professor Iraldo that coordinates uh, all the, the, the programs uh, in our Senate. He's the representative uh, for the different programs in our Senate. First, uh, before leaving the floor to him, I would like to show you a short video that uh, in a way present you, uh, I hope, in a more effective way of what I can say with my words. What is the third mission in, in Santana? Because I think you are very well involved that you will be even more in the next months in research and education. Let's have a, a quick uh, view of what we mean at Scuola Santana with third mission, that it's uh, one of the three uh, pillars that we believe should be in, in our way of uh, uh, working here at Santana. So please, if you can make the video go. The Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna welcomes the innovators of the future every year, guiding them on a path of excellence between training and research. This time of rapid change offers the opportunity to better understand the impact of the research conducted at the school. La terza missione si muove su due piani, un piano di lungo termine, progettare il futuro eh, per l'umanità. A sustainable future based on circular economy model. Per fare l'economia circolare bisogna rimettere le risorse, riusarle, allungarne la vita, usare gli uni, gli scarti dell'altro come avviene in natura. The school's management institute supports this change. Un esempio concreto dell'impatto dell'economia circolare è il lavoro che abbiamo fatto con un'impresa toscana del settore food, dove siamo riusciti a ridurre il consumo di plastica utilizzata per gli imballaggi di circa 4.300 kg, con una conseguente riduzione di CO2 emessa pari a 25.000 kg. But the economy itself risks being crushed by the weight of climate change. Many of the school's experts support government task forces around the world in this challenge, including the Institute of Economics. Dobbiamo assolutamente decarbonizzare l'economia. Una cosa che si può fare subito è promulgare una legge che imponga un limite di zero emissioni per il nostro paese, come è già stato fatto da altri paesi come recentemente la Cina. The Institute advises decision makers towards the Green New Deal, a change in economic policies that favors sustainable and inclusive growth. Change must also be pushed in the field of healthcare to prevent hundreds and hundreds of victims of medical errors, a topic addressed by many research groups at the school, including the Biorobotics Lab, that aims to eliminate errors by automating the preparation processes of biological samples. Portiamo l'automazione dove prima non c'era. 
La certezza del dato è essenziale per poi produrre una diagnosi senza errori. Non sono tante le istituzioni che davvero guardano al futuro. Allo stesso tempo eh, è importante dare dei risultati che poi siano davvero misurabili e usabili eh, dalla società. In just 18 months, the Life Reward Project of the Institute of Life Sciences has allowed the Val di Cornia in Tuscany to save 70% of water. Artificial recharging of the Cornia River was carried out. The riverbed was brought back to its original shape. Micro-irrigation systems were built and farmers were trained on water resource management. Tutte le attività che abbiamo realizzato costituiscono un unicum a livello mediterraneo per il numero così elevato di interventi in così pochi chilometri quadrati come quelli della Val di Cornia. Advanced technologies that are easy to spread, such as the one produced at Techip, where RecVisio 118 was invented, a telepresence helmet for greater immediacy of first aid. Eh, Lorenzo, per favore, mi fai vedere il capo eh, della persona, mi fai vedere se ci sono ferite. Such a device allows freehand operations and therefore an agile execution of operations and transmission of the subjective report to the doctor at the central offices. The impact of schools' research extends beyond Italian or European borders and reaches unstable areas of the world where civilizations work, increasingly more and more at risk of being kidnapped and killed. For this reason, the school has developed the HIT courses, preparation for work in hostile environments, in collaboration with the 1st Toscania Regiment of the Carabinieri, to provide the knowledge necessary to protect their lives. Si tratta di un'attività di formazione che implica un livello di stress molto elevato. Lo facciamo appositamente perché dobbiamo consentire alle persone di valutare se veramente se la sentono di andare in situazioni nelle quali questo livello di stress può esistere. Il true incubator of minds is measured in its ability to react. Non si tratta solo di uh, insegnare nozioni, ma in realtà si progettano persone. Ecco, questo è il ruolo eh, fondamentale, secondo me, dell'università, della terza missione, quindi essere preparati a reagire a quello che succederà. 2020 was one of those moments. Faced with the Covid epidemic, the Santana School was able to take immediate action. At the Percro Lab, an autonomous robot was created for the sterilization of environments from the virus through UVC rays. An InfoSalute task force was created for the rapid reaction to the possible presence of outbreaks in the school in collaboration with the Monasterio Foundation. An app for digital triage has been activated for rapid contact traceability. With the Learn With Us project, teachers at the school have had their lessons made public to enrich distance learning. And an orientation activity has been made accessible online for students who wish to join the school to develop the projects of their future. El Sant'Anne è un luogo che fa dell'incoraggiamento alla qualità. No, quindi ha la capacità di fare bene e di essere innovativi la propria bandiera. Quello che noi produciamo alla fine eh, sono persone che danno molto. Good morning, I'm Fabio Iraldo. It's so nice, so good to see you all here in presence, all together in a, in a room. Um, I, I'm here to give you the warmest welcome on behalf of all my colleagues, uh, PhD coordinators at the school. I, I know, I bet everyone else is already putting a lot of 
pressure on you on lessons and uh, pay, or you are putting pressure on, on yourself on uh, writing papers and so on, I want to do something very different. I want to focus my uh, speech, very brief speech, on something else. I, I will try to give you my pieces of advice, small pieces of advice, on uh, very consistent with what the rector has just said uh, for for your period here with us. So, the the first advice has already been given. N don't just live at the school. Leave the school. That means that at the school you will have a lot of opportunities to, to learn, to exchange opinions, to talk to each other, uh, to, to be there physically to interact with your fellow PhD student, not just from your course, but from any other course at the school. We are learning lots of things you've seen from the, uh, uh, from the introductory, uh, the introduction of the third mission. We are studying lots of things. Maybe you are interested in small bits of all the topics we are dealing with. Talk to each other, trying to understand more, try to understand how another topic can be useful to your interest, to your study. And that would be, for us, the, the greatest uh, aim. We are uh, caring so much uh, on giving you all the opportunity to stay here, to stay here at the central side, to stay in all the sides of the school, uh, to be physically present at the lessons. We do uh, put a lot of emphasis on that, to be there uh, in the room, to talk to each other, to interact. That's the way we like you to learn what we teach, but, but not just in the classroom. You know, there is also a brand new cafeteria at the school. The cafeteria is the way, is the most effective follow-up to the lesson. Uh, if you go to the cafeteria after the lesson and you keep on discussing with your fellow PhD student, that, that is for us a greatest a great achievement. Uh, second piece of advice, uh, take the opportunity to grasp, to absorb anything you can from, not just from your PhD course, from other PhD courses. Uh, we are working a lot with uh, my colleagues, PhD coordinators, to try and set up a common offer, you know, cross-cutting, with some topics that are dealt with in all the courses. Are you, inter you have seen uh, the third mission uh, uh, that we have uh, just uh, uh, showed. Are you interested in sustainability? Are you interested in robotics? Are you interested in agroscience? We'll deal with this topic, not just in the specific PhD course. We deal with these topics in all the PhD courses, and you are allowed to do so. You can just borrow a course with the credits that will be accounted for from any other PhD. You just raise your hand or you pick from what we hope we will try to offer you in a very organic way so that you, be, you will have mandatory courses. I know you will not like mandatory course, uh, the courses to be mandatory, but you have mandatory courses. But other than that, you can pick courses from any other uh, PhD at the school to build up your knowledge on what are your interests. That is very uh, important. Third piece of advice, do experience work and research in field at the school. Uh, many PhD courses are very well grounded on this approach, uh, others less, but take all the opportunities to take part into research teams. Because, you know, professor here at the school, they are very good teacher in the classroom, but maybe they can teach you more and better by coordinating a research. When you see them operating in field, they, they look quite different. Eh? They have a different approach, and maybe they can teach you something, not more, but, <clears throat> you know, differently. And you, you will learn how to carry out research. And for us, this is another good thing, good way to, to learn here at the school. Um, other two little pieces of advice is, very quickly, um, talk to us. Talk to your professors, talk to your supervisor, talk to your tutors, talk to your PhD representatives. For us, it is very important to have preventive feedbacks, N not 
you know, ex post feedbacks that might be too late. So don't be shy if you see something wrong or if you not just, just to complain but to propose something new, talk to us. Uh, fill in the questionnaires on, I know that that's, you know, you, you might see it as a waste of time, but for us, for the university, having your feedback through questionnaires is a very important piece of information because we work on those feedbacks. We analyze them thoroughly. Uh, we are assessed on the feedbacks you give. So for us, it is very important to take all your advices on board, and, and I can assure you, we uh, will do it. Last but not least, you should be aware that you will spend three years or, well, two years and a bit in one of the most beautiful cities in the world, which is located in the one of the most beautiful regions in the world, which is located in the one of the, mo or maybe the, most be <laughs> beautiful country in the world. So, you know, hang out with your friends, take it as a cultural opportunities. Move around, go in Tuscany, see anything else, uh, travel through the country and try to learn also informally what is our culture. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I'm waiting for the slides. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the school. I'm Juliana Frischi. I'm sure you're already familiar with my name because you will already have received tons of emails from me. But actually, as, for, as from today, I'm the former PhD representative because, I, because um, we all have elected our new representative, Elisabetta, who will um, talk in a um, few seconds. Uh, I'll just give you some um, key uh, notions about the academic senate and when you should refer to us, or I mean to Elisabetta from today on. And um, yeah, so. Okay, so the Academic Senate is one of the representative body of the school and uh, who deals with, let's say, political decisions. Um, another important central body of the school is the Board of Governors for the uh, Italian speakers, the CDA. And so the Academic Senate is, that's the Here's the composition of the Academic Senate, which has actually changed in the last, uh, during the last year. Um, so in the Academic Senate, there is representation of all the um, components of the school, including a PhD. And um, so when should you uh, refer to us? So basically whenever, so whenever you have a problem, especially problems that are related to the school and not specific to your institute. So example of issues, so I'm talking about this because uh, I just mentioned some of the issues that came up during the last years, so during the, my mandate as a PhD representative. So if you have, sorry, no. Okay, so issues related to PhD suspension or maternity leave or scholarship extension, for example, during, for PhD students who were mostly hit by COVID, um, we had a government ex um, extension of the scholarship, so like I received a lot of emails about this, or um, issues related to ba the 10% budget and reimbursements or problems specific to international students. So what I usually do is also help you to um, contact the person, I mean, to understand who's the person you have to refer to when you have this kind of problems. And um, so I'll leave the floor to Elisabetta now to um, talk about the importance of coordinating with uh, PhD representatives at the institute level and uh, in the PhD committees. Thank you very much and welcome again.
Thank you very much, Juliana, and uh, good morning to everyone. As Juliana was saying, I'm the new uh, representative of the PhD students in the Senate. I'm very new. I did, my mandate just started on Wednesday, and it will go on for two years. I'm actually at the third year out of four in economics, so for the next two years, I will be your PhD representative. Uh, so uh, you can refer to me for all the things that Juliana was talking about, but I'm not the only person that you uh, can refer to. Uh, in fact, there are also other PhD representatives in all the other uh, school committees, uh, such as the um, co Joint Committee for Student Teachers, and, uh, or the Presidio Qualità, Health and Security, or the uh, Com Comitato Garante del Codice Etico, um, or for example, the Library Committee, which uh, currently is Marco Martinez, but he is heading out. So if there are any volunteers to become representatives, um, I will not list all of the uh, PhD representatives. You can see the names here. And uh, we have also, uh, I mean, Juliana has actually sent you an email uh, listing them. Same thing for the, um, for the representatives in the institute. Uh, you can refer to your, um, to your representatives in your institute for all the problems that you might have for the, uh, the problems related to the institute. While for the other, uh, other issues, uh, you might also refer to me and then I might redirect you to the right person to, to talk to. So, as I was saying, uh, every PhD has an, an academic PhD board and a PhD representative, so contact them, don't worry about that, just uh, talk to me or talk to your representative and we will try to sort your problems out. Um, and yes, yeah, so you can contact me for any issue, as I was saying, this is my email. And also, I invite you, we invite you to, um, to meet at, uh, during lunch, uh, we will be at 13.15. Uh, and we can uh, show you around campus for anyone who doesn't know it, and we can also answer to some of the questions you might have. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning, everyone. And a heartfelt welcome to the new students, to everyone in the room. My name is Chiara Magini, and I'm here to represent the uh, PhD office, which I oversee. It's a great time to be here. It's, uh, your faces in the room is what makes sense and what makes our, our work meaningful. So thank you for being here today. Um, we are here to celebrate the beginning of your PhD journey at the Scuola Sant'Anna. So it's a, it's a joyful uh, occasion. Um, so as I said, I oversee the PhD office. I'm not here just for myself, but I'm here as a part of a great team of experienced and dedicated professionals. Very quickly, Laura, Annalisa, Carlotta, Volodia, Valentina, Silvia, myself, Gianmarco, Valentina, and Elisabetta. These are the ones who make it happen at administrative level. So, uh, further on, this is what we do. Basically, um, it's not representative, it's uh, the things that you might be interested in, in as students. So, we basically deal with all the administrative procedures from your admission to your PhD defense and uh, the printing and uh, uh, the mailing of the, your diplomas. So everything in between. Uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. If you're not the right office, we'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Okay, here is the list of are 10 uh, PhD courses uh, you're very familiar with. You will hear more about all of them from the PhD coordinator, so I'm not going to say much. Uh, as uh, the previous speakers has, uh, have said, they're, um, they're rooted in some of the disciplines, but they're very multidisciplinary as well. 
In addition to the 10 PhD courses that the school organizes um, directly, we also partake in 10 additional PhD programs that are organized by other institutions, but the school uh, sponsors um, one or more scholarships in. So today, we're not only welcoming 124 students who enrolled at the Scuola Sant'Anna, but also uh, 16 more students who are part of different programs, but we sponsor their, sco their scholarship. So they will be living at the school, they will be living in the school community, so we are very uh, happy to have you here as well. I know that some of you are here today, so welcome, you're part of the community. It's quite a lot. And these are the names of the administrative coordinators in our office for all of the PhD programs. You've already met them, so you know them, but just in case, we want to make sure that you know who you uh, can contact in case you need information or you have questions or, or requests. Whoops, sorry. These are more um, of our administrative contacts that you might want to um, have, especially our general uh, PhD office uh, email address. Finally, we are part of a community. We have rules and regulations. Uh, we feel that it's important to remind you that we have uh, some rules to follow and some regulations that you might refer to in your life at the school. First and foremost, the statute of the Scuola Sant'Anna, uh, the training activities regulations, especially the book three, which refers to the PhD courses. It's especially important for you as, a student, as, as students because it deals with rights and responsibilities, it deals with some important um, roles uh, that you will encounter in your uh, time at the school, like your uh, PhD coordinators, your supervisor and co-supervisor. Uh, it sets and establishes um, pr processes and procedures around the PhD defense and other important uh, steps of your PhD careers. So um, we we recommend reading it. And then the code of ethics that we all follow as part of the, of the community of the Scuola Sant'Anna. And then, I mean, some practical forms that you will find on the internet that might be, you know, facilitating your life here at the school, like how to request, you know, the 10% budget uh, for research, etc., etc. Thank you for your attention. And I wish you a great day and a wonderful three or four years at the school. Thank you. Okay. So now we call we call the PhD coordinators to introduce their their course. And I will do that. Uh, Thank you very much. So we start with Professor Mario Rico Pe from the PhD in Agrobiodiversity. Enrico, yes. the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, good morning. I have the honor to introduce you uh, the PhD program in Agrobiodiversity. And so I bring my the best welcome, uh, warm welcome from me and from all the members of the uh, board. So uh, the presentation will be, when I was thinking about how to, uh, to decide what type of uh, a presentation to give, I decided to follow a uh, intermediate presentation, meaning that some of the information will go directly to the PhD students of the course, but the idea is also to provide information to all of you in the view that has been uh, described very clearly by uh, our coordinator, Professor uh, Iraldo. So I will start with the, the structure of our PhD. Uh, the PhD is organized in two curricula, but actually 
One is uh, curriculum in plant genetic resources, and the other one is functional biodiversity in agro uh, ecosystems. In reality, those two uh, curricula, the boundary between the two uh, curricula is very smudged now, it's not so clear cut, because over the year, the uh, application of uh, similar uh, approaches and, and, and models uh, are reducing the differences. But we kept the two curricula, especially to give the idea of the two major uh, areas uh, that, uh, that characterize the agrobiodiversity, especially to, for the recruiting, uh, recruitment uh, aspect, because then each can identify what are the, 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 the two uh, the two possibilities. Uh, uh, majority of the activities that will be carried out during the, the PhD program will be done in two new centers. The center, the, il centro di ricerca di produzione vegetale o crop uh, science uh, center and centro di uh, ricerca di scienze delle piante o uh, plant sciences but not only in these two uh, major centers. Uh, I, I have written here uh, the major educational aims of our PhD program, but I should mention that the, the statement should be uh, read as contribution to. So we, uh, and, and the three aims are uh, indicated ac according to a sort of a priority uh, scheme. So we would like to contribute to the enhancement of human resources capacity in the use and management of uh, uh, biological variation, both in agriculture and natural uh, systems. And the reason why we would like to, to, to contribute to this enhancement is because we want to contribute to achieve the sustainability, a better sustainability of, of agricultural system. Sustainability is a term that has been already mentioned before and will return, I, I, I believe, also in, in, in the presentation of other PhD program. The second step is obviously in order to achieve this uh, uh, enhancement, you need also to acquire a strong uh, uh, methodological and uh, theo uh, theoretical knowledge on some specific uh, discipline. And here are written in red the major discipline which characterize the two curricula. And finally, uh, this PhD program is a little bit of pecu uh, is peculiar as compared to other PhD program at Scuola and also in, in Italy, I would say, because it has a, a view to uh, contribute to the capacity building and technological transfer of this technology to emerging countries. And in fact, uh, at least half of our PhD students come from emerging countries. Uh, what are the, uh, I sketch very briefly some of the research that are currently going on, just to give you an idea of what type of research are carried out. So one is characterization and valorization of plant and microbe, microbial genetic resources. So uh, there is a lot of biodiversity. One of the challenges is to measure biodiversity and try to understand what is that make this biodiversity important and the difference between organism and, and, and species. So the other one is uh, to uh, identify the genetic and molecular basis of complex traits because complex traits are the one most important also for agriculture both in crops, but not only in crop, also in, uh, in model species. Model species are important because uh, they have a sort of, uh, a number of, uh, of characteristics that allow to, de uh, to 
facilitate the characterization of complex uh, uh, mechanisms, uh, complex problems, and then the, the, the next step is to try to transfer the information that you can gain by studying uh, uh, model species to the crop. Then plant microbe interaction. This probably you already are familiar to the fact that each uh, living organism is a, finally its life is a contribution with the status of the organism, but also the interaction with with microbe. Uh, sometimes, especially in plant science, we believe mostly that the interactions are negative, and in fact there are many negative interactions with pathogens, but there are also many beneficial interactions, and this is a new area that is expanding, and we are also working quite, uh, quite deep, deeply in this, uh, in this area. Then the, 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 other, the other area that I'm mentioning now are more related to the second part, so the, the functional uh, of the agrobiodiversity. So the role of functional diversity, and this is important to, to study the interaction between organisms, mostly plants with the microbe, with the insect, and so on. Application of agrobiodiversity solution, and finally, in order to, if you work on plants, you have to also study the, 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 how plants work. So you need to study the, the, the physiology. Uh, what are the major methodological approaches that are uh, followed? Obviously, molecular biology technologies are uh, horizontally spreading, and, and we are following many of these uh, molecular biology technologies. Plant physiology techniques, microbiology, advanced micros microscopy, uh, DNA sequencing, so the possibility to identify the structure of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the genetic material allows now to study entire genome and in order to identify the, inf the information that is contained into this genome is important also to, 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 be, uh, to, to, to learn the, the, the bioinformatic approaches that can extract the information. And then obviously also uh, multivariate analysis. Uh, this, uh, the ad uh, advantage of doing this approach at the genomic level has changed quite dramatically in the past few years uh, the way of looking at problems and the way of uh, uh, trying to solve the problem. So one of the way to uh, describe this new uh, revolution is to consider a sort of data-driven approaches. And in order to uh, take the most out of the data that can be produced by uh, applying uh, research at different levels is to be able to have high specialization, because without high specialization you cannot uh, be engaged in any interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary way. So, Eventually, in your uh, curriculum, in, in your time during your PhD, you have to find a balance between specialization on one hand, but also keep an open mind, as Professor Iraldo uh, clearly stressed uh, in, in his presentation. Uh, this is just a quick uh, picture of uh, the backbone of our uh, PhD program. All, these are all uh, uh, professors of Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna. I want to mention la Professoressa Laura Ercoli, because Laura Ercoli, as you will see later on, is also coordinator of another PhD program in agrobioscience. And the fact that a number of, of uh, professors are present in both the boards of the, of the PhD immediately tells you the possibility and, and the reality of building a cooperation. 
the two PhD has a different uh, view, but they share uh, a number of, uh, of objectives. Uh, besides uh, professor from the Scuola Sant'Anna, we have also two members which are not from Scuola Sant'Anna, like Erika Mika, who is from the University of Piemonte Orientale, and Carlo Fadda. Uh, the students, I know that there are three, at least three students from Ethiopia can recognize the outfit of Carlo Fadda. Carlo Fadda was uh, the coordinator of the uh, center uh, in, uh, in Addis Abeba, and this is the, the outfit that was given to him. And when he was working in Ethiopia, he also was given a name of uh, Gebre Jesus. So it's Carlo Fadda plus Gebre Jesus. But obviously, as uh, Rector tell, uh, told you before, but also Professor Iraldo and uh, the people who uh, sp spoke before me, it's not only the professor that make the PhD program. So they are your colleague, the one that are already uh, ahead of you, the one that are uh, in different PhD program as, uh, than you, and there are also uh, postdoc, there are also researcher, there are visiting professors. So you have to interact as much as possible with, with also the many others. Uh, our uh, PhD is spread, so the activity are uh, mostly in three major locations, the bio labs, plant labs, which are nearby, and the land lab, which is close uh, near to the, uh, to the central office. But obviously, as it was already stressed, you have to keep in mind that you have a very nice campus where you have to spend uh, your time and you are welcome to, uh, because many of the uh, activity will be carried out, especially cultural activity, seminars, workshop, and so on. Finally, I don't want to give more the advice because Professor Iraldo already told you, but I believe, and I always tell uh, all the PhD students every year, keep in mind that this period is and should be the best period of your life. And in, or and in order to achieve this uh, objective, you have to consider that uh, uh, during your activity, you have to put a lot of effort, but you have to put your personality. Personality which must have curiosity, but you have curiosity, otherwise you would not be here. Together with curiosity, as I mentioned before, you need competence. You have to acquire competence. Otherwise, it's just a word. But competence to get alone is not enough. You need also creativity. Maybe it not be evident at the beginning, but this is something that you have to try to, to develop during your period. And the creativity, is important for you, but is important also for, for your colleague, and is also important for us, because we are the, the professor, but in, 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 a, in a healthy relationship, you learn from us, but we learn from you. So again, try not to keep your uh, capacity, your personality from us. And finally, you need commitment because uh, you have to put a lot of uh, effort, but uh, I'm sure that you are here because of this. And if you will be able to, 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 to play with these uh, magic seas, then the educational aim, which are ambitious, can be achieved. So good luck and welcome again. Thank you very much to Professor Okay, it's now the turn of the PhD in Human Rights, and Professor Barbara Henry coordinates the PhD, so Barbara, the floor is yours. Human Rights and Global Policies. Sorry. Thank you, and welcome. First of all, I would say congratulations, because 
all of you have been able to be selected and the selected procedures of the school are very, very not easy to, um, to be uh, approached. And then congratulations and welcome again. I'm here in my capacity as coordinator of the PhD program in human rights and global politics with this undertitled Legal, Philosophical and Economic Challenges. Um, this, the aim of this presentation from my side is to come a little bit closer, but not too much, and to give you an overview. Huh? Uh, to give you an overview for the sake of the non-PhD uh, candidates of the Human Rights and Global Politics Program. That's to say, some hints, some suggestions, and first of all, an invite to look with the curiosity and openness that have been already evoked uh, by my colleagues and by the director, to just look over uh, in the side website the, the program, the didactical program, the organization structure of each PhD of the Scuola Santana, in order to grasp and to borrow, as Iraldo has already suggested, the optional courses which are necessary to fulfill your um, overall uh, didactical duties. Mm? The overview, also this uh, PhD is very international uh, structured, not only as the other, of course, but even in its fundamental aims and uh, idea. Um, this, this PhD is as two paths, a more research path orientation, well, that's to say, um, it gives the opportunity to carry out research eh, in a very lively and supportive environment in order to become an academic. But the other goal is to provide even a, 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 an adequate path to become a, a professional, eh, to undertake professional careers really all over the world. Uh, because the range of international, national, regional entities and transnational and supranational is very broad in both private and public sectors. So to say research orientation and orientation to professions in the field which are more or less uh, related to human rights and global politics. And that's to say the two pillars. Uh, the content-based pillars are human rights and global politics, but the areas, uh, the disciplinary areas, which are called to cover the two fields are agricultural food and, and agri-environmental law, with a lot of relation with all the green and environmental issues and climate change issues, public international law, European studies, which merge right and politics and international relations in a very original way, and political philosophy. I am the coordinator, I'm Barbara Henry, and I'm a political philosopher, um, together with other components, for example, from the ethical perspective as well. Um, these four fields uh, are uh, structured in the way that the two main topics are approached in a cross disciplinary way. Uh, together with this more content-based approach, we have many hours, a very high amount of hours, dedicated to methodological courses. And of course, we are in the social science department, and our methodological courses are quantitative science, qualitative science, open data, and open science, soft skills as well. Mm -hmm. methods to learn how to public, how to speech, how to behave properly in the different arena, huh? international, supranational, and even national arena of your future, mm? future commitment. What is very relevant, persons, huh? not only the supervisors, but even the board as a whole. Mm? We are not separated. We are, of course, individuals. We have different roles, coordinator, deputy coordinator, and all the members of the board, which are nevertheless there for all the PhD uh, candidates. And why not? We are open, always. Our office are open to, 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 to have talk and um, 
interactions with all the PhD candidates of the Scuola. And I think, I think Geraldo said before, talk to us. Please knock the doors. Be curious and be even a little bit adventurous in looking at possibility to merge your research topic with the people, the, the professors, the researchers which are here in the school for you all. As another word that I would say, again, not only research university, but mutual learning community. This is what we are and what we would say we try to do uh, in this way for our PhD candidates, but I think that our mission is for every PhD candidate of the school as well. Location, our wonderful main campus, again, this is your home in Howard as well, and Palazzo Vernagalli, because the PhD candidates of the Human Rights Global Policy Program and of the Law uh, PhD Program are in Palazzo Vernagalli, they have their workplaces, they have part of the uh, board um, which is working there, and the classroom, and so on and so on. And there's even a possibility to have a much closer everyday interaction, the face-to-face -face interaction, again, after the, the tragedy of the COVID time, is again an enormous opportunity to be used from your side. Main facts, very briefly, so far, if you make a, a picture of the, the people who are enrolled, are now 27 PhD candidates. This year, 2022, we have had six positions available. I don't bore you with the different type of fundings, ministry fundings, PNRR, and so on. They are all uh, enrolled at the same level. They are um, obliged to the same duties. They are open again to the same opportunities. And more or less, we receive each year 143 applications. And of course, th we can see the proportions. 124 foreigners and 39 Italians. So what I said for the beginning, we are very international. I mean, even the basin of our uh, candidates is really uh, international and open to the world. And if you see from this picture, which is of course a, a wonderful work of the deputy coordinator, we are really open to a world which is um, tragically not in peace, but we try to, uh, to in some way to, uh, um, uh, to ameliorate and to try to find better possibility for all uh, people living in the world which is now more and more damaged or menaced by global challenges and global risks. Sorry. Uh, the key features of the program, again, if you want to look at the didactical program, it's much easier for you to understand. We have a focus on the issue of human rights and global politics, and a strong interdisciplinary approach. I would say cross-disciplinary approach. We have methodological courses in which all these definitions, which are not only flatus voces, what is multi, inter, trans, cross, even a disciplinarity, are approached and discussed because it's a part, fundamental element of your education. How to learn to really understand and make a positive use of this terminology and to make use of the possibility of your field to become much more inter, trans and cross-disciplinary. The relevance of the methodology is fundamental and is one of our key features that I hope can become more and more a relevant feature, in my opinion, eh, for all the PhD and perhaps the, uh, the medium eh, to borrow courses will be, in my opinion, more and more the methodological courses that each of our PhD program offer to you. Fundamental, again, I repeat, uh, our um, strong um, components, the relevance of the PhD office, we have already seen in the presentation of Caramagini, is Valentina Mistreta. Without Valentina, all these uh, good uh, things that I've um, talked about could not be carried out. So even welcome again and thank you to the staff, to the administrative staff of the PhD office, Valentina Mistreta, and to the board, and even to the faculty which is very international structured. I can only name Nadia Urbinati, for example, 
and others which are not only in the board but are components of a more qualified and even more qualified fa faculty of professors. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. So I ask Professor Luca Valcarenghi to introduce you the characteristics of the PhD program in Emerging Digital Technologies. Uh, thank you, uh, Enrico. Uh, let me see if I can work with this because you don't get too often to speak in the auditorium, so you have to get trained. And, okay, thank you. Um, so, welcome, benvenuti. Uh, you can read the welcome address in your language. I'm sorry that uh, many of our students cannot be here because they had uh, visa issues, but uh, I thank you the ones that came here for being here. And uh, um, what is the, the PhD, PhD ADT about? You can read it by yourself, but uh, uh, let me say with my words. So you have seen that uh, what happened with COVID. So many of us was uh, jailed at home. So, uh, and you see the importance of communication and of uh, advanced technologies. And you see this in the importance of these technologies also in every uh, day of your life. So your phone, your mobile phones, your uh, uh, light um, management in your house, the solar panels that are so popular right now. So we are dealing with all these aspects. So with the emerging digital technology. So how to put into communication all the different devices, people, devices, and uh, all these aspects. So I think it is, uh, it is very interesting and it is also interesting for you to become also part of either the academic community after these uh, three year training or part of very important industries. So um, without going too much into the details, the PhD ADT is uh, um, um, a inter-institute PhD that involves the uh, TECHIP Institute and the uh, Institute of uh, Mechanical Intelligence. Uh, and in turn, in the TECHIP we have the two labs that are the RETIS labs and the IRETE labs. So the RETIS lab uh, deals with scheduling algorithms and um, different cyber physical systems. Uh, the INRETE lab is more dedicated to the communication part, so services and communication part going from the uh, lower layer, so from the physical layer up to the upper layer and services, while the Institute of Mechanical Intelligence deals with the human-robot interaction, mixed realities, uh, and also optical fiber sensor. So you see already that uh, even within a PhD there is a lot of interdisciplinarity. But um, I think uh, that, uh, borrowing what uh, Professor Pe said earlier, we need also a lot of competence within our field. So because uh, I'm uh, um, very well uh, convinced that a good interdisciplinary research is made of also people that know very well their discipline. So they are able to go in details on what their discipline can offer and so on and so forth. So going on, this is the coordinator and the board of the uh, PhD is split among the different, uh, the three different uh, curricula that we have. And uh, these are the locations. So the um, TECIP is in via uh, Moruzzi, where the CNR area is, and the Institute of Mechanical Intelligence is uh, in uh, uh, Via Lamanni, that is, uh, I think, next door or some of the plant labs that uh, you have seen earlier. And uh, these are the addresses of the PhD office that you have already seen and of our two administrative contacts. And um, so, uh, thank you very much. Let me say one word before closing, um, just to be on time. Um, as you have heard earlier, it is really important that you tell us 
what is wrong, so what uh, is not working for you in the PhD, in the administration, in the procedure, um, but also that you participate a lot to the PhD program itself. So if you are uh, feeling that we are missing initiative, please talk to your representative and speak with us. And we can organize stuff. For example, I give you just an example that this year, thanks to the financement of the, um, 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 the Department of Excellence in uh, Robotics and AI, we offered uh, a budget, a total budget of 20k euros to students to propose the research, their research, so the research proposal. So please come with us with this initiative and we are more than welcome to sponsor you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Professor Walter Enghi. Now we have Professor Michele Emding for the uh, Health Science uh, uh, Technology and Management PhD. Thank you, Michele. Thank you, Fabian. <sighs> okay, welcome on board, guys and girls. So we deal with a complex matter. Uh, we deal with uh, individual health, so society health, and the world health. And uh, uh, this is the reason uh, the Scuola Superiore Santana has decided to uh, keep together uh, different expertise uh, present uh, and uh, try to, to give uh, the due answer to this complex uh, question. Healthcare systems are complex, dynamic, and characterized by interdisciplinarity and require a continuous innovation, uh, competences, and the ability of management to be sustainable and ensure the right care to the right people in the right place in a due balance between a cost-effective approach by the health system and the attention to the individual to the person. So this course aims to provide an interdisciplinary background to the PhD student and uh, introducing him or her to other disciplines from uh, both experimental and social sciences, that is medicine, engineering, economics, management, law. So while the traditional PhD focus on a single discipline, this one leads people to work in an, in an interdisciplinary environment. And this aspect is distinctive for conducting research on the edge, as well as for offering a competitive advantage to candidates aiming to reach high level job position in real life settings. Um, myself, together with Milena Baianieri, who is the vice uh, coordinator, and together with uh, all these uh, friends and colleagues from the Scuola Sant'Anna, uh, some of them uh, coming from the clinical setting, uh, some from the economy and management setting, uh, Sabina Nuti, Chiara Segheri, Nicola Bellè, some from uh, bioengineering uh, science, Adriana Menciassi, Silvestro Micera, Piero Castoldi, Luca Valcanenghi, uh, Massimo Bergamasco e Carlo Alberto Avizzano, some from uh, uh, laws and philosophy disciplines, Emanuele Rossi, Luca Gori, Mariella Gagliardi, Alberto Pirni, Gaetana Morgante, some from 
Economics, Andrea Mina, Alberto Di Minin. And uh, uh, we have also colleagues coming from the University of Pisa and Siena, from the Fondazione Monasterio, who is the sister hospital uh, of the Scuola Sant'Anna, research hospital set uh, here in Pisa and Massa. And, uh, um, and uh, people also from the Karolinska Institute. So this is uh, the reason uh, we, we, we set up an interdisciplinary uh, program uh, with all these people uh, presenting to uh, our PhD candidates uh, the matter from different point of views and uh, with the uh, the need to uh, of a tight interaction and the, the uh, request for the students to um, contribute directly to teaching. We could uh, do nothing without our uh, people uh, from the administrative staff, Dr. Elisabetta Picci and Dr. Carlotta Brullo. You have known uh, her. So uh, they, she, uh, are, is a, a true reference for uh, small and uh, big problems. But this is the uh, the core of uh, the, uh, our work and uh, after uh, the first and second edition, uh, these are the uh, uh, candidates who won uh, the selection and uh, they come from a different cultural background, medicine, philosophy, psychology, uh, nurse, uh, nursing science, and uh, we are proud of uh, uh, this uh, variety of uh, intelligences and minds. So uh, we are uh, ready to uh, begin with uh, our third uh, year and uh, again welcome on board. Thank you so much Professor Emdin. And then uh, uh, we have uh, the last uh, presentation before a, a little break that we're going to take. And it's from uh, Professor uh, Katerina Sganga, who is substituting uh, Kojali. Professor Paolo Bello is the, the PhD coordinator. Thank you, Katerina. The floor is yours. Thank you and welcome everyone. As you may see, I'm uh, not Gianluigi Palombella indeed. I was thinking about, joking about the fact that I just got a bit of dying in my hair, but then I thought that he would actually afterwards sue me for defamation. So let's go ahead. I'm the person who separates you from the break and from probably what you are very much waiting for. So start networking with each other, particularly with people not from your program. So let me very briefly give you an overview of what our PhD is about. That's mostly for people not from the PhD in law, because I believe that people from the PhD law know quite much about that. So uh, this is to trigger some attention in something that most of you believe being very boring. I want to tell you why it's not so boring as you all believe. So uh, the PhD program in law uh, is structured uh, around a uh, uh, basic notion of strong interdisciplinarity. So we believe that law cannot be studied alone, but we connect each and every subject that are uh, linked to our expertise to an idea of contamination with other disciplines, not just between different areas of law, but also between law and other subjects. And most importantly, what we are doing is to focus on innovation and new technologies. Each of, our, of the area we cover, and you will see uh, it more when I will give you an overview of the members of our board, focus on this link between law and innovation and the way how law changes vis-a-vis uh, -vis innovation. Most importantly, uh, being uh, one of the core and strategic 
focus of our institute, the governance of inclusive society, and for the fact that our PhD is one of the two PhDs of the Polis, we also structured our courses around this knowledge of providing PhD students with tools to understand how to manage, how to govern inclusive societies. And most importantly, this is to give tools for our PhD students, not just to be academics, but also to be forerunners of what we can consider being the heated issues of our days. Over the three-year programs, our PhDs attend a number of courses, so 120 hours of uh, courses in the first year, and then you have 60 to 80 hours in the second year. They are compelled, forced to focus on courses that are not in their main realm of expertise. So the idea of interdisciplinarity is something which we push through our PhD students since the very beginning. We don't want them just to uh, deepen the knowledge in their uh, subject. They are also exposed to uh, courses from other PhDs and we uh, ourselves host in our uh, courses people from other PhDs. So I invite you to have a look at the courses we offer because some of them might be relevant also if you belong to experimental sciences and not social sciences. Uh, I don't provide a list here in the slides for the sake of conciseness, but all the information are on our dedicated PhD in lawsantanapisa.it website. Most of our courses, 85% are taught in English, which is a challenge when we actually focus on uh, uh, non-comparative subjects, but that's what we wanted to do particularly to make sure that we are really inclusive also in, uh, uh, in the courses we deliver. Our PhD students have a publication requirement of at least two contributions on renowned scientific journals in the first two years, and the third year is entirely left to writing the dissertation. Three to six months of the, research, of the research should be carried out abroad as visiting scholar. We have quite an important network of universities we work together with, particularly with our European uh, projects. Yes, lawyers also do European projects, even if you don't believe so. And uh, this network uh, is what we use to make it possible for our students to be hosted and uh, be contaminated with other views. So our board, briefly, once again, uh, you, uh, PhD in law, know us. This is mostly for the perusal of uh, those of you who never saw or met any of uh, the members of our board. Gianluigi Palombella is the coordinator and is full professor of applied legal theory. He works on access to justice, rule of law, environmental and climate change, the way our law works, and the notion of sustainable governance. We have Andrea Bertolini, uh, he is now, uh, he just became associate professor of private law. Uh, he works in the area of robotics and AI, bioethics, roboethics and machine ethics, and the law and economics of contracts and liability rules. Then we have Francesca Biondi Dal Monte, associate professor of constitutional law, working on immigration, asylum, citizenship, welfare systems and solidarity. Edoardo Chitti, full professor of administrative law, working on law and regulation with a focus on the EU uh, Green Deal, global administrative law and its evolution. You have Giovanni Comande, full professor of private comparative law, working on AI governance and law, privacy, data protection, health law and bioethics, medical liability and research ethics. Giacomo Delle Donne, assistant professor of constitutional law, working on form of governments, regulation of elections, political parties, regionalism, federalism, also in comparative perspective, and EU constitutional law. Alberto Di Martino, full professor of criminal law, working on uh, uh, criminal law and immigration, labor exploitation, transnational scope of criminal law in comparative perspective. Maria Gagliardi, associate professor of private law, working on private law and risk management with a focus on insurance law, medical law, privacy, data protection, and family law. Giuseppe Martinico, full professor of comparative public law, focusing on comparative federalism, dialogues between courts, EU constitutional law and populism and con law. Gaetana Morgante, full professor of criminal law, working on criminal business law, so corporate crimes, compliance, uh, integrity, corruption and preventive measures in the public and private sector. Erika Palmerini, 
private law, working on digital technologies, AI, robotics, and health law. Emanuele Rossi, full professor of con law, working on fundamental freedoms, immigration law, third sectors, electoral law, and parliamentary law. Myself, intellectual property, comparative uh, uh, IP law, digital copyright law, digital rights, open data and open science, and Emanuele Sommario, Associate Professor of International Law, working on international human rights law, human rights in emergency, legal framework of disaster prevention, responsive activities, and peace keeping. And then, last but not least, Elena Vivaldi, working on fundamental rights, poverty, disabilities, and solidarities. We don't just have uh, local fellows, now you got a perspective of what we do and what we focus on, and I renew the invitation which you already heard from other professors here, just come and knock at our doors. We tend to be in our office, we are quite well reachable uh, on uh, any platform you, of your uh, preference. And that's also to tell you that no matter if uh, you believe uh, that we just focus on our subject, we are very much interested also in listening to your research and to foster cooperation with other institutes. So come closer to us and come and discuss with us your interest. We also have foreign fellows uh, enriching our program with uh, uh, external perspectives. We have, uh, just to mention some of them, Young Clubbers, International Law Helsinki. We have Andrew Klipp from Maastricht, Teresa Rodriguez de la Heras Palel from uh, Carlos Tercero of Madrid, <coughs> Wojciech Sadurski from Warsaw and Sydney, uh, Raquel Shalabar there from the Upper University of Catalonia. They are all big experts in their field uh, and quite renowned professors. We use them also to make sure that our uh, students uh, will have the possibility to spend time in their institution but also to enter into the academic networks that these people uh, uh, patronize. What is our everyday challenge? Well, uh, being able to transform the law, perceiving the law as a tool to orient the future, and that links to the third mission, which we discussed before, and also to create a bridge between what we do and what experimental science students do. Uh, where are we located? Mostly here, main uh, building. Some offices are in Palazzo Toscanelli and in Palazzo Vernagalli. Our courses already started in October. Some of them will start in the following weeks. So once again, go and have a look at them because you're still in time to enroll uh, if you uh, would like to. I leave on the slides for your perusal the uh, links to uh, all the teaching activities and all the other events, seminars, and presentations which we actually uh, open to all of you. These are the contacts. So our PhD office, our great administrative staff, uh, and the contact of the coordinator for any question you may have, that's where uh, you can uh, refer to. Thank you very much for your attention and welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Ganga, we are perfectly upon schedule, right on time to take a little break. We're going to take a little break uh, and we will gather again at 11.45 sharp. Thank you very much.
Para que é isso?
non sarebbe una pessima idea. Il campanello è l'opera. Eh, eh, ah. Vengo anch'io, dai. Chiederei alla regia se può caricare la mia presentazione, grazie.
Ok, aspettiamo ancora qualche minuto. E da vicino mi ci voglio. Io ancora inizio a cedere due anni. Che ho gli occhiali. Inizio a cedere ora Ok, so I, I would directly take the floor so that we can start again. And uh, in my role of uh, PhD coordinator for the PhD in management of sustainability, health, and innovation, I will try to give you a quick overview of what we do, uh, who we are, what we do, and, and especially I would like to uh, consistently with what I said uh, at the beginning with my other hat, I would like to tell you something about uh, how interdisciplinary can be uh, one, one uh, PhD and what kind of opportunities we could also offer to, to other uh, PhD coming from, from uh, other courses to learn uh, something, something we do. Uh, first of all, what are the aims of the PhD? The aims are uh, quite uh, effectively mirrored in the title of PhD. We have three, they're not really official curricula, they are areas of, of, of thematic areas of specialization, uh, but as you will see in the PhD, there is a common background in the first semester that is uh, uh, provided as, as a, uh, common ground courses to all the PhD candidates. But the three areas, they do uh, perfectly reflect what is the research structure of the Institute of Management uh, that is uh, uh, coordinating the PhD. So we have one area that is uh, that deals with innovation processes. So it means we are studying a lot uh, 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 technological innovation, organizational innovation. There is a, an air specific area dealing with patents and how to get patents and how to valorize patents. There is another area dealing with open innovation, which is a, a far-reaching frontier topic that we have been dealing with in the last years and so forth and so on. The second area deals with sustainability meaning by that both social and environmental sustainability and we have uh, as all the other areas of the PhD uh, we have a, a sort of a, a two-faced uh, approach one is on public institutions so on policies and uh, we are studying how policies are affecting the uh, strategic choices of companies and the other uh, side of the coin is uh, management, is pure managerial theories applied in, in companies. So we have these two uh, different souls in each of the three thematic areas. Sustainability deals with all the frontiers of the already mentioned, uh, for example, decarbonization uh, strategy to, to fight climate change. Uh, circular economy is one core area of this uh, uh, part of the institute and of the PhD, uh, but also resources like water, biodiversity, and so on. Everything is seen from the point of view of the company, so how to manage these uh, opportunities, I would say, to define stra business strategy and, and adapt the business model to these new uh, priorities for the economic system, but we are not uh, just operating through uh, a researcher and professor that are uh, management expert. We also have a technical, we have engineers in the institute and they are teaching at the PhD. The third area is healthcare, so health policies and uh, they deal with models and tools for uh, governance, again, of the institutional part of the healthcare system, but also to support uh, uh, companies, private and public organizations operating in the health uh, uh, system, such as hospitals, for example. So this is the uh, general overview of the research area. They are research area of the institute, but they are mirrored in, as I will show you in a few minutes, in the uh, structure of all the courses that we are uh, teaching at the, at the PhD. Few, few indicators, we have uh, quite a cyclical 
uh, trend in the in the application these are the applications uh, we can uh, basically those applications that are coming from the European Union are quite uh, stable in the trend. Uh, we have uh, cyclic uh, cycles in the application coming from abroad, and recently uh, they are getting back to reasonable numbers. We have had an explosion between 2018 and 2020, uh, but now with the pandemic, unfortunately, maybe people coming from abroad has decreased the, the number of applications. They are starting up again in the new cycle. I don't have the numbers, but they are they have been increasing again to more than, than 100 applications. Uh, the age, well, if you are interested in the age, we have very young people, but also not so young people. No, we have people also attending the PhD course in their 40s. So uh, this means that uh, probably we are attracting also some professionals or, or researchers that are operating in other university that are enriching their, their CV by, by attending our PhD course. And the location. As I told you, uh, we are quite, uh, uh, we have more or less roughly one third of the applications that are coming from the EU, most of which are coming from Italy. We have a big amount of applications that are coming from Asia, uh, a, a decent amount coming from Africa, and obviously we are weaker in the uh, American uh, continent, especially North America, but also. Uh, South America is not that uh, represented. I've decided more than telling you uh, who we are, the, the, the board of the PhD is made up of all the teachers, all the professors in the management institute. So the, long, the list is very long. We also have research, senior researchers in the board. So it's, it's quite long, and, but you see the names of the teachers and the professors in the second column of these tables that I'm showing you, because they are the teachers of the PhD course. And uh, we are right across the, uh, the square here, Piazza Martiri. Uh, on the other side of the square, there is our institute at Palazzo Aliata. We also give lessons there. And unfortunately, the PhD students have to cope with the lack of spaces. So sometimes you find them all together in a room in Palazzo Aliata uh, studying all together, which is positive, but also quite negative because the room is not that uh, comfortable. Um, Courses, how are we organized? We have these three semesters approach. There is the first semester, the second semester, and then the third, obviously, you don't, you don't have any other semester in one year, so the, the third semester is the first semester of the second year, okay? The first semester of the first year is uh, a, a common ground, a methodological, uh, uh, set of courses. So we give the, the grounds, we give the common tools, we give the methodologies. We have courses on, for example, research methodologies, and those are the approaches that then we use to carry out our researches. Uh, we have the uh, surviving research methodology, which is quite meaningful. We, we teach the student how to survive uh, research and how to, you know, uh, uh, surf through all the difficulties of uh, research, but we also have a, a, a very strong course on management theories. Uh, that is very good because we have students coming from very different disciplines. We have engineers, we have uh, 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 people graduated in uh, chemistry, but also uh, uh, agro bioscience and so on. So we have sort of equalized the competencies to give them the, all the uh, uh, knowledge on uh, how you use management theories when operating in research. Uh, quite interestingly, in this first semester, we have included some courses that we also would like to share with other PhDs, like, for example, how to publish an article on, on a scientific research, and I know that other PhDs are offering the same uh, courses, more or less, or how to speak in public. We have experienced this very good uh, uh, and effective uh, public speaking course last year. Probably we are going to propose it again, and this might be useful for all the PhD students uh, in the room, also from other PhDs. Uh, and professors as well, <laughs> very good. Um, also in the first semester, we have the three basic courses of the three areas, so sustainability management, health management, and innovation management. Uh, but they also are uh, like 
spread, split it between the first and the second semester. Second semester is mostly optional uh, courses, so not mandatory. And we start to have uh, quite long courses. They give you uh, three or, or six credits, uh, but they are already kind of, you know, specialized in the area. So we have our students that probably at this stage are already selecting their areas of interest. So maybe you can pick up all courses or most of the courses in the sustainability area, in the health area, or in the innovation area. Again, this might be an opportunity to build up a, a, curricula which, a curriculum which is integrated with other PhD. Maybe I'm dealing with health. My idea is uh, I, I'm not interested so much in sustainability, so maybe I can pick up courses from another PhD, health uh, technology management, for example, who can give me uh, more specialized uh, competencies, as Enrico was saying, because specialized com knowledge makes you a good interdisciplinary researcher. Now you have this base and you can cooperate with others. Uh, the third semester is very much experimental. We basically are building this third semester as totally optional uh, with uh, workshops, seminars, and so on. So very brief, uh, very specialized. Well, for example, in this, we have advanced courses on the use of specific tools. But again, these tools might be interesting for other PhD students coming from other courses. Uh, I just give you an example. Uh, we have a course which is specialized in the use of the life cycle assessment, LCA tool, which is used by many other institutes. So maybe we, can, we are able to train other PhD students uh, for the use of their research in their institute. Uh, that is going to be it. So it was quite short, but very much focused on the, what we are uh, offering and what is our approach. So thank you very much. And I'm calling now, Laura. Laura Ercoli, thank you much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, a warm uh, welcome from uh, my side. I, I will ask for my presentation. I think, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry for this interruption. Okay, I am presenting the PhD program in agrobiosciences. I am the coordinator, I am Laura Ercoli. I am really happy to illustrate this program. This is a short overview about the structure of our course, our program, three, just to summarize, it is a three-year program. Uh, it is based on the idea, some, somebody before me has underlined this important word, interdisciplinary background, and uh, we have the ambition to train a student to face research frontiers in the general topic of plant and crop sciences. Uh, the organization of the course is based on two uh, main curricula, uh, one about genomics and crop production, and one about agriculture and environment. But, of course, the uh, researchers are, in many cases, in most cases, uh, strictly interconnected. So this topic are uh, just uh, a formal uh, division. Okay, uh, our aim is... Uh, to uh, the rector, uh, Sabina Nuti, has previously told that our uh, school is uh, based on the work of uh, research PhD students. It is a research university, so we, we uh, um, base uh, most of our research activities on the activities of you all of you. And uh, from the other side, we have the, the duty and we feel the obligation 
to uh, train uh, and uh, to allow you to carry out research in, uh, in a supporting environment and uh, in order to uh, directly involve uh, students, PhD students in research activities in, uh, in our case, in the two centers of uh, this school, crop science and plant science. This is uh, the structure is similar to the one described previously by Enrico Pe. So uh, we have uh, uh, our aim, our task is uh, to uh, develop research and techniques skill so to uh, our students will behave hopefully but I think uh, we, we success in this uh, goal uh, to address uh, our students will be able to address research problem, formulate and test hypotheses and achieve a full understanding of all methodologies up to date, innovative methodologies and techniques and skills. So also we train students to develop communication skill, that is, uh, this is very important for effective writing, oral presentation, research outcome, to a very wide range of audience. You have seen previously by uh, the, the video by our rector, the, um, illustrated not by uh, maybe by Fabio Eraldo, about uh, the third mission. So this uh, is based, uh, of course, based on uh, um, important uh, content, but also uh, based on effective uh, communication abilities. Uh, we have um, a lot of uh, tools to achieve these goal goals, supervisor support, mentoring, institute and center support, workshop, conference, training courses, formally assessed courses, and also a lot of informal opportunity. Uh, informal opportunities are very important to, to facilitate communication, cross-fertilization, and also uh, to develop new ideas, applying non-conventional tools. Uh, our students are also uh, required, uh, it is not an obligation, it is an opportunity to, to undergo on artificial lens, let's say. Antonio De Simone is working on the mathematical part, the mathematical modeling of the robotic system. Silvestro Micera working on neural engineering. Uh, Cecilia Laschi, she is working on soft robotics and she is now uh, an external member because it is in the National University of Singapore. Uh, Cesare Stefanini, okay, oh, okay. Cesare Stefanini um, is also the, the, um, the dean of the class of experimental science and uh, is working on uh, human. Uh, uh, animal inspired robotics and also robo biorobotics for industrial application. Angelo Maria Sabatini is working more on signal processing, signal analysis. Leonardo Ricotti on tissue engineering. Gastone Ciuti. Gaston Ciuti on uh, um, uh, collaborative robotics for medical application. Calogero Oddo. Um, no, uh, Calogero Oddo, yes, oh, sorry, Calogero Oddo was presented in the previous slide and is working on neural engineering and artificial touch. Deborah Angeloni, she is uh, a biologist and she is working also on very nice application for space application of biology. Francesco Greco uh, is working on uh, smart materials for biorobotics. Matteo Cianchetti, soft robotics. Marco Controzzi, uh, artificial hands. Alberto Mazzoni, uh, neuro robotics. Alessandro Lucantonio, again on uh, mathematical uh, modeling. And finally, uh, Stefano Palagi, working on micro robotics. In addition to these people that are all belonging to Scuola Sant'Anna and to the Biorobotics Institute, we have two additional 
colleagues from the Italian Institute of Technology. We have a collaboration with the Italian Institute of Technology since many years, and uh, uh, we are sharing the facilities with the Italian Institute of Technology. Lucia Beccai, she has a, a, a PI in the Italian Institute of Technology, working in Genova. So there are some PhD students of our PhD program working physically in Genova. And Gianni Ciofani, again, from the Italian Institute of Technologies, but working in, together with us in the same institute. So our PhD, uh, supported by the Italian Institute of Technologies, are partially in, uh, uh, in our institute, partially in Genova. So uh, the board that you have seen is uh, assisted by a larger team of tutors and co-supervisors coming from the entire biorobotics faculty. And you can see here all the faces. Some faces were already in the previous slide, some other are new faces. And they are organized, let's say, in the different research areas that I have just illustrated. So. Um, you can see that there are some faces in more than one line because some topics are not easily mapped in just one uh, area. So bioinspired soft robotics can be also medical robotics depending on the, uh, on the application. The PhD office, uh, the administrative contact is uh, uh, Silvia De Loro, and she is with us since a long time, so a, 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 a great thank to Silvia. Annalisa Bigi, sorry I have not the, the picture of Annalisa, was just um, in, included in the, the administrative support of the uh, PhD. And in addition, we have Helping for the front desk activity, we have a Federica Radice who is supporting us also for some activities related to the early meeting and so on. Where we are? So maybe we are the most remote uh, location. We are located in the Biorobotics Institute in Polo Santa Navaldera, uh, that is in Ponte d'Era. Ponte d'Era is a small town 20 kilometers from Pisa. There are some PhD students working also in joint lab with us, so in the Research Center on Sea Technologies and Marine Robotics in Livorno. And in a number of centers, basically around Pisa, Pisa Florence, depending on the specific research activities. So we have much, many people working, for example, on rehabilitation. In this case, they are working, for example, in a joint lab in Florence with Istituto Dognocchi for doing tests with patients, or in uh, Stella Maris for doing tests with uh, uh, children, and so on. So we have uh, discussed very much at the beginning of this uh, uh, meeting about the possibility of interaction. This is something that I already, um, I, I, I always say to our PhD students, please don't be shy, go to PISA, attend uh, uh, seminar courses, and share the environment and leave Scuola Sant'Anna, not live in Scuola Sant'Anna. But I want also to offer to visit us because basically, um, from Pisa Central Station to Ponte d'Era is just 50 minutes. From Ponte d'Era to the location is three minutes walking without crossing any street. So not <laughs> dangerous, <laughs> not dangerous path. So visit us because basically this is just 20 minutes from Pisa Central Station. And it will be very nice to see also some of you not attending the PhD course of biorobotics, but attending our course. Just an additional note, in the main headquarters, we have also the Italian Institute of Technology staff and the facilities of IIT are located uh, here in Ponte d'Era. So this is the research park in Ponte d'Era. Uh, we have a, a quite a large facilities with uh, more than 6,000 um, square meter of total area, different laboratories, uh, clean rooms, not so advanced as in TACIP because we are more oriented towards micromechanics rather than microelectronics, but quite advanced machines for um, mechanical uh, fabrication, precision Mecha precision mechanical workshop and uh, 
um, this is just one floor, the, the, the uh, ground floor of our institute. All the courses, classes, seminars, lecture uh, are normally held here, so in the same institute. Okay, so course in teaching, very briefly, uh, you find all the information on the, the web page. What I can say is that we try to organize the courses with some basic courses for the biorobotics vision, then science and technologies methods, laboratory skill, and focused research topics. Concerning this, uh, additional topics related to ethical, legal, societal, and economic implication of biorobotics, we try to uh, share now the courses with the uh, other PhD. But I have to say, and Barbara, Professor Henry is here, that we tried from the beginning to expose our PhD students to other topics, and um, Professor Henry was very um, kind to give courses in Ponte d'Era on some topics that are not so, so close, apparently, to engineering. Finally, uh, we organize each year a yearly event. So this year, next year, we have some, some problems, I think, to, to put all the people in the same room. But anyhow, uh, we will try. So it is three, four days event with all the PhD presentation for the first year, an evaluation, a formal evaluation. Normally, this is held in, uh, in July. And poster session for sharing uh, um, information, uh, interaction among all the PhD students. This is the family. At the moment, we have uh, 100, uh, 131 students, uh, 47 enrolled this year, uh, 30 at the second year, 26 at the third year, plus uh, about 30 under extension for the thesis writing, also for COVID. So that's all. Welcome in the family of the PhD in Barobotics at Scuola Sant'Anna. And these are some pictures of our yearly event, virtual in 2020 blended in 2021 and finally a full meeting last year, not last year, in July. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Arianna. And now we have the last presentation from Professor Claudio Passino, who is coordinator of the PhD in Transitional, Transitional Medicine. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Fabio. And uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome again to the Scuola. Uh, I will briefly speak about uh, our program in translational medicine. Uh, well, um, our program is a three-year program. Um, the aim of the program is uh, to train our students uh, with different backgrounds. We will see the background of our, the students actually enrolled in the program. Uh, with the, uh, the final goal uh, to translate the experimental biomedicine to the clinical setting. So, um, we have uh, students that work on projects uh, on more basic uh, science and others that are actually applying to the patient their research. So uh, the two uh, shows of the, the, of the program are actually experimental biomedicine and clinical research. Um, we stress the fact that uh, the students need to have, uh, all students have a multidisciplinary approach. So uh, with the final goal, again, to translate their research in something that can be applied to, um, to, clinical, to the clinical setting. So um, the research areas where students um, conduct their project are wide, very wide, and, and, but the, the main fields are cardiovascular diseases and uh, cancer and cancer. And, uh, uh, the special issues are focused on neurohormone activation, anesthesiology, brain heart axis, new drug development, and use of another vector as a research tool uh, or um, therapeutic agents. There are also a line of research that uh, is uh, conducted together with the Management Health Institute uh, group here at the Scuola uh, that uh, deals with uh, problem uh, connected to the management of uh, uh, health in chronic uh, patients. 
as I was telling before, the background of our student is uh, quite uh, wide. Um, we are bes besides uh, medical doctors and biologists that are the majority of our students, we enrolled in our program also other uh, students with different background, engineers, uh, veterinary medical doctors, pharmaceutical chemists, pure chemists, we have one psychologist, physics, physicist, and so these uh, per se represent uh, an extremely interesting and stimulating environment because uh, our students can exchange their experience and background and uh, uh, gain their knowledge of, uh, um, we, uh, from each other. Uh, where uh, our students since the first year start to work to their research project, uh, we believe in the uh, educational process uh, on the bench or on, on, the side, on the bedside for those of uh, our students that are conducting clinical research pro projects. Uh, and our uh, facilities concerning laboratory, we have some laboratory of the school uh, the med lab uh, within the uh, area of the National Research Council uh, here in Pisa, but we have also a strict collaboration with some institutional here in Pisa and uh, outside Pisa, in particular with the Institute of Clinical Physiology in the area of uh, CNR area of research, and with uh, uh, Fondazione Monasterio, who is, which is a research hospital where uh, the clinical protocols of our students can be conducted. Um, but some clinical projects are actually conducted because there is an agreement with the university hospital in, here in Pisa for those uh, PhD students that uh, are conducting um, experiments and protocols uh, in area, areas so who are not covered by uh, the expertise of uh, Fondazione uh, Monasterio. We, are, we, are, we have also some students that uh, are uh, conducted a research protocol at the Fondazione Pisana per la Scienza, here in Pisa again, and uh, at the Institute, Italian Institute of Technology in Genoa, particularly those students that are um, uh, conducting projects on drug uh, development and uh, basic uh, sciences connected to drug development. The faculty board uh, try to cover all the areas uh, that uh, um, are part of the research areas uh, of the PhD uh, program. So we have a, a physician, biologist, uh, again a biochemist, and uh, some people, of course, uh, dealing with uh, health management issues. And the, the, we have the student's representative for uh, this uh, current year is uh, Vincenzo uh, Castiglione, who uh, all students can refer to for um, problem or uh, questions. Uh, we have, uh, since the, the background of our students is quite different, uh, um, we have uh, some mandatory courses which cover topics that are quite general, let's say. So, uh, the courses that uh, stimulate our students to uh, deepen their understanding of research methodology, biostatistics, scientific communication, scientific English, and this may help them to uh, apply better their research uh, project uh, within uh, uh, the program. Besides this mandatory course, we offer, of course, uh, some more specific courses that can be chosen by students uh, according to their interest and to their uh, um, uh, knowledge. And so the, the composition of the study plan can be personalized by students themselves. Uh, we are particularly proud of the scientific output of our students. Uh, we have, uh, as I was told, uh, actually enrolled 41 students. And uh, in the last three years, uh, these students actually published uh, almost 300 papers on uh, international journals. And I want to underscore the fact that uh, the 45% of these papers are co-authored by these, our students as first authors. So this means that the, this paper was actually part of their, of their project. And another thing that I want to underscore is the more than 60% of our students actually have published at least one paper before gaining the, the degree. All these um, results, of course, cannot be uh, done and achieved without the support of uh, administrative staff. Uh, I want 
to thank uh, Laura Bevacqua, uh, who is uh, uh, the, uh, the person in charge of, uh, uh, of uh, our PhD program, uh, who helped us uh, to solve all the administrative issues and not only administrative issues. So, again, thank to her for uh, her help. And thank you for your attention and welcome again. Thank you. I, I thank Professor Arsino together with all the other PhD coordinators and uh, I also thank them for being uh, totally uh, aligned with the times. We are quite astonishingly ahead of schedule, I have to say, not on schedule. So it is my pleasure to leave the floor to Professor Andrea Mina, who is Pro-Rector for, for International Relationship. Uh, here at, at, at Santana School, and uh, he will talk about a very interesting initiative that I have been learning in the last uh, weeks uh, and discovering lots of opportunities, uh, which is called the uh, ELISA. I thought it was the ELISA project, but it's actually the ELISA Alliance because it's wider. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much, Fabio. Good morning and the, the warmest uh, welcome. I'm very, very happy to be here um, to meet you. Um, you are uh, perhaps the most international part of the squala. And so you're very important uh, um, in a number of ways uh, to what we do um, and how we want to grow our university. I'll keep, I'll, I'll, I want to keep you here for just another um, five minutes uh, to present some of the um, international opportunities uh, of which you can become. Um, a part. I am the Director for International Relations uh, of Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna. I am Professor of Economics at the Institute of Economics uh, um, of Scuola. You will have a um, wealth of um, opportunities uh, to connect uh, within and outside uh, this institution. And there will be plenty of resources to assist you in the process um, within your teams, within your institutes, uh, but there is also the International Relations Office uh, who will be there um, to help on matters of visas, um, but also on more practical matters, some reminders about insurance coverage uh, that you would need uh, to go to certain destinations, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we are in the process of extending the amount of uh, international agreements uh, that we have, uh, just as a short introduction, um, you will not need a university-wide agreement to go and visit uh, a foreign university where you can do um, good research, research that is relevant to what you do. Institutes uh, can have um, agreements. Um, you can also um, travel, maybe the selection of countries um, is a, li na a little narrower for um, institutional constraints, but you can also travel um, individually to some destination. Just make sure that you comply with what you need to do um, for your own uh, sort of uh, safety and so that you are in the best possible conditions to perform the research tasks you go abroad for. Okay. Um, of the international projects that we have at the school, um, we became part of the um, ELISA Alliance um, three years ago. This is part of a um, European Commission's-led initiative to create uh, um, a um, scaling up version, if you like, of the Erasmus program. And so, um, not all universities, but a, a good deal of universities competed as consortia um, to become European universities. We are part of um, uh, the European Engineering, Learning, Innovation and Science Alliance, ELISA, so there is a strong focus on engineering disciplines, but uh, as you will guess from the names of the partners uh, that we have in this alliance and by the sheer size in terms of students, uh, faculty and staff, you will have already understood it's not us who make up the largest share of these numbers. We are very small relative to some of the other partners. Who are these guys? These guys um, are scattered uh, um, not too far. Um, we are partners with the uh, Polytechnic University of Madrid, the Budapest University of Technology and Economics, uh, Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech, uh, the Friedrich Alexander Université de Langen Nürnberg, Istanbul Technical University, Scuola Normale Superiore, Université Paris Sciences et Lettres, 
and the uh, University Polytechnic of Bucharest. Some of these universities are generalist universities. So the fact that you are not pursuing a PhD in engineering does not mean that you are irrelevant uh, for the activities uh, that are pursued through the Alliance. In fact, the same agreements, uh, the same resources can be put uh, to your services. Okay, because the Alliance covers uh, everything. And we are very happy that it does, uh, because uh, it is designed to be um, an inter-trans, inter multidisciplinary sort of engagement. Uh, you'll hear that we talk a lot about uh, the right term to refer to, and sort of more than one discipline in one's uh, sort of arsenal of skills. Um, I'll skip. Um, on the finer details, but I just want to flag for you some of the opportunities. Some opportunities uh, will be more relevant to undergraduate uh, students, but some of them uh, will be also um, relevant uh, um, to you in connection, for example, with the Erasmus program, but not solely in connection with the Erasmus program. Um, part uh, of the um, work that has been going on uh, um, in the Alliance uh, um, is due to a research leg of the project, uh, which is financed via a Horizon lump sum project. Part of what they're doing, just to give you an example of where you could find some value for yourselves and for the research you want to do, is a mapping of the research and laboratory infrastructure of all the other partners. For uh, we like to think we are a very good university, but we are a small university. There will surely be one partner that has the kit, the data, the machine that you will need. Um, and uh, um, the idea is to provide you with a data set of the resources that are available elsewhere. Um, across disciplines, because this exercise uh, um, is being done not just for the engineering disciplines, uh, but for everything that the, the universities contain. Then, of course, uh, you will discover through your advisors, supervisors, uh, um, colleagues, teammates, uh, where the resources you need are. And they may not be there, but there might be something that you didn't know was there if you keep alert to the opportunities. Um, there are some uh, um, sort of institutional badges uh, um, which might themselves be of interest, but I would imagine that for PhD students uh, um, it's in fact um, one in particular um, that might be of interest, not because of the badge, uh, but because of the opportunity to work uh, um, with other PhD students, uh, and in fact all sorts of students, but also um, stakeholders uh, which may be industrial partners. Um, out of three um, um, educational objectives of the Alliance, uh, you see that there will be um, more sort of joint uh, degrees uh, there will be a diploma subs supplement uh, that may not concern you. Um, but I would like to stress the engagement uh, through communities. Uh, that would give you a credential that you can put in your CV as, an, uh, as a line to make it uh, um, maybe a little uh, richer. I'm sure that you already have already rich CVs if you are here. Um, but what a community is, is rather interesting because uh, in order to foster interdisciplinarity, um, they are groups of people um, uh, that may come from anywhere in any discipline um, that uh, gather together um, to address uh, a societal challenge or a mission. Um, and so um, I give you an example. Um, you can start your own community um, on the problem of uh, how to solve uh, pollution in congested city centers. Um, and you can launch a call and you can pull together um, interested people, including, whenever relevant, uh, um, local stakeholders, local governments, uh, industry, and, and of course, uh, other students, other researchers, uh, to organize activities uh, in and around uh, um, this problem. Okay, this is just to alight another um, example. And uh, there are communities that are already um, live and active, um, and they seem good fun to me. Um, this is all I really wanted to um, say. Um, it's really great to meet you. Um, 
because you will be the um, literally the life and blood of the research of the school. Um, and I hope that you will become very, very soon and as smoothly as possible part of the community of the school within your departments, but also beyond your departments. I wish all of you who start the PhD journey the most successful route to the PhD award. And I'm done. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Mina. Um, we have no. I, I thank you very much for your for participating in this in this uh, meeting and and uh, for your attention. And I think we have a toast now, right outside where where we we had the break. No, not yet. In a few minutes, yeah. You can very calmly. Uh, leave this room and, and start walking very slowly and, and look around yourself and then sooner or later a toast will be will be given. Okay? Thank you very much.